Hello everyone and good day to you. I hope that you're doing great. This is Roger, of course, with Groovis Games Unlimited, creator of Dungeon Crusade and the Avalon Adventure Board Game. And hello, welcome back to um, our ongoing series of how to set up and play both the Avalon Adventure Board Game and Dungeon Crusade. So it is very nice to be back with you. And again, I hope you've been doing good. Um, I want to start off with welcoming some new subscribers to the channel. Thank you very much that um, for subscribing and hanging out with us here. So um, I'm sincerely grateful for you subscribing and it's nice to have you here. And if you're someone who just stumbled onto the channel, of course, welcome. We're happy that you're here. I hope you're enjoying all the videos. Um, definitely, if you are new and you just found this video, go back and watch a few before this one because we're going to kind of dive right into how to play the Avalon Adventure board game. Okay, so moving right along, I want to get in to playing right away because I've honestly been dying to play this with you. A couple of things we have to go over and actually uh, something kind of very important that came up a while ago and I want to address it now. Um, we're going to get to that in a second. But I had to actually jot some notes down because I did not want to forget. Um, but for our kind of mini playthrough, we're not going to play a whole game. Um, from just that, you know, the overview and how to set it up, you, you probably already know how to play this game. But we're going to go over a few churns. I'm going to point a few things out. But please know this is a very easy game. V very simple, but it's very, um, very thematic. And it'll get you definitely into the lore of... Um, the, the land of Avalon and everything that goes with it. So we're going to go over a few different regions. We're going to have some battles and we'll have some fun with this. So what I wanted to go over real quick is kind of important. Um, it's when you select your heroes at the very start, um, you know, the six heroes that will have their adventure across the land of Avalon. So let's go down to the table and let me explain something for you. Okay, let's start with this right here and let me explain a few things. And actually, I think you'll learn even more about the game from what I'm going to explain. Okay, so this first um, row of heroes right here, these six, these are the six heroes that come with each edition of Dungeon Crusade, okay? The ones here in back, these are the expansion heroes. Okay, so total of 12 heroes, and if you want to count Albus, the hero's fetch hound, who actually is right here, there's actually 13 heroes, but playable heroes, 12. So when I designed the Avalon Adventure board game, it was designed with playing with six heroes, okay? So it's recommended to play with six heroes. Now, if you wanna challenge yourself, you could of course try with three, four, or five, or you could, if you have the expansion, you're more than welcome to add in a few more or even all 12. And just remember, there's kind of like, in a way, no wrong way to play Dungeon Crusade. And what I mean by that is, I always encourage people to, to house rule things, come up with variants. You know, it, it's all about having fun. If you're having fun with it, then roll with it. But for our demonstration today, we're going to be playing with just these six heroes, okay? So let me show you, or go back to that scenario book, and something you may learn about the game because, um, of course, I always want to teach you what I can and get you more acclimated to it. So let's go back to that Into the Depths quest, and that's what we were looking at before. And, and this is, I'm leading up to why I brought this up. Remember all these different difficulties here and all these different options? So you can move and tweak all these to whatever you like. So some people um, have been playing the game with three, four, five heroes, or even more. So my point is they had asked, well, what about the Avalon Adventure board game? Okay, so we're gonna bring the heroes back, but just always remember there's all of these different options that you can kind of like think of like slider switch or something that you could always tweak all this stuff to create a new game for yourself. So the thing is, let's say that someone, someone had asked, okay, I wanna play Dungeon Crusade with four heroes, but I wanna play the Avalon Adventure board game first. So, what is what 
kind of the standard way or what's going to be the official way, let's say that, and we're gonna, let's not count the six heroes in back. Let's say that someone's gonna play with these four heroes. They decide to play Dungeon Crusade, okay? So they have their four heroes selected. In this case, before you start the Avalon Adventure board game, kind of think of these two heroes or any of these two heroes as henchmen. You know, they're just gonna kind of join your party, like hired guns, mercenaries, however you wanna call it. They're gonna join these four heroes on their adventure in Avalon, okay? So if your heroes survive and they make it back to Hope's Reach, these two heroes, your henchmen heroes, hired guns, whatever you wanna call them, they forfeit all of like the rejuvenation potions they may have discovered, loot, gold, and they give it to these four, and then they kind of just go off on their way, okay? That's how that kind of works, and that was just brought up a lot, and I wanted to address it in this video. So it's recommended to play with six heroes with the Avalon Adventure board game, or, you know, homebrew it. Play with all 12 if you like. If you're having fun, that's all that matters. Lastly, Let's say you're gonna play Mega Dungeon Crusade, and Mega Dungeon Crusade is considered when you're playing with seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 heroes. Yes, it's an epic long game, but epic fun. So let's say you did, you know, before the Avalon Adventure board game, say, okay, well, I'm gonna take 12 heroes in the Dungeon Crusade. Okay, you would still select six out of the 12, you know, pick and choose what you want, and then consider those other six heroes Maybe, like, thematically, they won't have to do something in Avalon to, you know, combat some monsters in a village or what have you. So, ultimately, hopefully I explained that well enough for you. You always want to play with six heroes in the Avalon Adventure, adventure Board game, because that's the way it was designed. But, do what you want, as long as you're having fun. Okay? So, let's move on to the next part now. Okay, what we are going to do first is place our adventure cards here at the top left of the game board. And I have them stacked with, you know, like that green region cards on top, the yellow tan regions in the middle, and then the red region on the bottom, so it's easy to find. So you're going to place those at the top left. And I didn't show you this before, but here we can see a banner marked with unexplored and a D12, and D12. That means you're gonna roll a D12 when the heroes move into an unexplored region. Um, to the right, there's another banner, and that is marked as explored. And there's a D6, meaning if the heroes travel into a region that has one of those red tracking tokens, one of these, that means you're gonna find that adventure card and roll a D6 and follow that entry on the adventure card. So once again, when the heroes move into an unexplored region, you're going to roll 1d12 and follow what that adventure card says. If the heroes enter into an explored region that has one of those tokens, you're going to roll a d6 and follow that entry on the card. And that way, you know, when you put them over here, they're easy to find. Okay, our heroes are about to start their adventure in Avalon. And just to refresh your memory from the last video, let's discuss where the runes are, where the possible runes of eternity could be. Remember, we have to find the green, the yellow, and the red one. So over here in this kind of green region, we have a possible rune here at the Tower of St. Viticus, another possible rune over here at Wither Brook Forest East, and a possible rune, green rune, at the Tower of the Maidens. For the yellow region or tan region, we have a possible rune over here at the Crags. Another possible yellow rune, remember we're looking for the yellow one, here at the Tomb of the Undead. And then way up here in the north, up here at the Runes of Hextor, there's the final um, yellow, po possibly where the yellow rune could be. Lastly, we're looking for the red rune in the red region. So we have a possible rune here at the Dungeon of 13 Moons. Over here at Castle Blackwood, there could be a possible rune of eternity here, the red one. And finally over here at Ashar's Tower. This is the last um, one for the red rune where it could possibly be. And let me say, so I don't think I told you before, 
Remember that there's six fake runes, the blue ones. You don't need to find those unless you want to. All you need to locate is the green, the yellow, and the red. Once the heroes have those three runes, they start their journey back to Hope's Reach to meet Father Jova, shatter the curse on the dungeon, and then you can import your heroes into Dungeon Crusade. So let's up, let's head up here to Hope's Reach. Okay, here we are at Hope's Reach, and here's our heroes here. Remember, they're represented by the victory flag. So all the heroes, of course, move together to a region. Before we discuss how to move, I want to touch on something that seems to come up a lot. And it's the question, how long does the Avalon Adventure board game take? And I thought this is the, the perfect opportunity to tell you. And quite honestly, it depends on you as the player or your group. And what I mean is, supposedly you guys are just, if you're playing solo, you just want to go for the runes and that's it. And of course, that's totally fine. So then it could be possibly a short game. You know, you already have the mindset, I'm just going to get the runes, get back to Hope's Reach, and I'm done. On the other hand, you may want to explore Avalon and go to all the different locations to try to get a bunch of loot, a bunch of gold. You know, your group may want to do that. So right there, when people ask, how long does this game, you know, take? How long does it take to play? It depends on what the player's goal is in this kind of open world of Avalon. So I wanted to address that real quick with you. Okay, let's discuss how the heroes move into another region. So at the top of a turn, or even right now at the start of the game, the heroes are permitted to move one space. You'll notice these white dotted lines, these boundaries or border lines. That's what divides each region. So on the top of a turn, they could move one space. So here at Hope's Reach, a legal move would be over here to Old Orchard Grove. They can move over here to the Dungeon of Isto, or they can move south to the Tower of St. Viticus, because of course there's a, a possible Rune of Eternity here. So you may be playing with, you know, of course solo or with a group and says, well, we're gonna go to Old Orchard Grove, then we're gonna explore the Dungeon of Isto, then go to Ancient Runes, then finally hit the Tower of St. Viticus, okay? So really, it's up to you, the plot you want to create going through the land of Avalon. But remember, once you have the three runes, you have to plot a course back. And I'll let you discover the strategy in that of how you have to get back to Hope's Reach. For now, let's go over here to the Tower of St. Viticus and we'll have an adventure here. Okay, what we're gonna do is go over to our adventure cards and we're gonna find the Tower of St. Viticus. Okay, we have our adventure card for the Tower of St. Viticus. And you can see the entries here. Here's um, one to two, three to four. And on the reverse side, here's five to seven, eight to 10, 11 to 12. So of course, this is an unexplored region, right? There's no red tracking token there. We're going to take the D12 and roll. And what do we get? We have a six. So let's find entry six on the card and see what it says. Okay, we have our adventure card here and let's look at entry six. Now when I say entry six, um, this says five to seven, which of course, five, six, seven. So let's read what this is. As evening draws in, the heroes take a small rest on the stone steps of the tower to relax and admire the view of Hope's Reach. Okay, so this here is just some flavor text, um, kind of some lore in the game. And as you can see, like where the heroes, I'm gonna move here real quick, but where the heroes are at, kind of Hope's Reach is kind of like north of them. So it kind of like goes with where they're at in the region. And you'll discover that all of the regions here, when you when you find an adventure card, is gonna describe exactly where you're at. Again, I, I absolutely loved creating all of the different adventures and entries for this game. Absolutely loved it. Um, so let me give you, before we move on here. So this right here, this would be the end of this. We would put a red tracking token on that. But before we go, let me tell you what you're kind of in for. 
Um, entries two to four are usually going to be a battle or something bad, something negative, something that's, you know, going to possibly hinder the heroes. The same with entries three to four. Um, entries five, six, seven, it's going to be a nice piece of flavor text to kind of draw you the, into the experience. And everything above, like eight through ten, eight, nine, ten, um, is going to be a very good reward. And then some very good rewards are from like 11 and 12. Maybe you'll see 10, 11, 12. So, any, so that's kind of like how all of this is structured. Um, but I will tell you that one to two are usually very bad things that could happen. So I wanted to explain to you how the structure is for an adventure card. So let's head back over here to the Tower of St. Viticus and finish up what the heroes have to do there. Okay, here we are back at Hope's Reach. And first thing we're gonna do though, is remember our adventure card here that we just used? We're gonna put it to the top of the board where it says Explored, where that banner was. So I placed that up there. And so we can find that easily if we have to go back to this region. Next thing we're gonna do is put a red tracking token here. Again, that signifies that the heroes have explored the Tower of St. Viticus. Finally, we're allowed to reveal the rune to see if this is a rune of eternity or one of the blue ones. And honestly, I scattered those randomly and have not touched them since, so let's see. Okay, so it is a blue rune, but I'm glad that came up. Let's discuss that for a moment. This goes into kind of like a pool for all the heroes to use. So you don't have to give this to just one hero. You just kind of put this to the side. And remember what a blue rune does is it will allow you to reroll any die roll in the game. And um, this carries over into Dungeon Crusade. So you, if you have this, you can use this in Dungeon Crusade. And at any time, no matter what kind of roll it is, no matter what, you can always use this to re-roll a die. So we're going to take that and we'll put it into kind of like the hero's main inventory. You don't assign this to a particular hero. Hero, You can use this at any time. So I'll put this over here. And next I wanted to get to, and it's kind of, kind of be like our demo. We're going to travel over um, to the ancient rune. So again, this would be the end of the churn. We're at the top of a new turn now. So we're going to go over, I'm going to shift the camera just a tad, and we can see that white um, borderline or boundary. So again, this is a legal move. We're going to go into the ancient runes and have an adventure. We're going to do a lot of stuff here, and I think you're going to enjoy this. Also, real quick, you're going to notice, I don't know if you can see them here, but there's these green crystals. Of course, heroes can't move over that. They always have to move over only one of the white borders at a time. So I was trying to find one that's kind of, but you'll, you'll see when you come up to these, you can only move across one at a time. So let's get the adventure card for the ancient runes and we'll do a few things here. Okay, I have a fun little demo um, that we're going to run and um, it'll give me a chance to show you a few things about the hero cards and do an attribute test. So I think we're going to have some fun here. Um, here's the adventure card for the ancient runes, again, double sided. And just like I said before, you know, one to two, like you can see, we're going to actually run a battle, um, three to four. And so it follows that same structure. You may find some that are a few different when I created them. Um, but you can always guess like 11 and 12 are going to be some great, great rewards. Or if, if there's just a single 12, that's going to be a really awesome reward. Even though we're going to run a battle here, let's just roll a die so you get the hang of this. And you probably already know how to play this. So again, we're in an unexplored area, right? We're going to take the D12 and we roll. Well, 12. And actually, we're going we're gonna to be doing this one after our battle here. Okay, so we're, we're gonna take a look at this. Um, but we're gonna do a battle here, and I want to um, show you a few things. So let's read this, and I think we're gonna have some fun. Okay, for this battle, we're gonna break everything down for you so you get this totally, okay? So let's read. Battle, randomly select two heroes. Let's stop there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll a D6, and we're going to randomly select two heroes for this battle. Let's go over here and take a look at the heroes. 
Okay, so that entry instructed us to randomly select two heroes. And remember, we were talking about the initiative tokens, and now you'll learn why these have to stay in place. Of course, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Remember, those are never permitted to move during the Avalon Adventure board game. They must stay right where they're at. So the card is telling us we have to randomly select two heroes. How do we do that? Very simple. We're gonna take a D6 and we're gonna roll. Okay, so four came up and so um, Paloom, our rogue, is gonna be involved in this battle and we're gonna roll again. And of course, if a four would come up, we would just re-roll. Okay, two. Okay, and when Shadowleaf, our archer. Okay, so these two girls are gonna be in the upcoming battle. Let's head back over here and see what is gonna happen next.